Hi, Professor Baldwin here, and today we're going to talk about the set of real numbers. Real numbers are the numbers we use in everyday life. They go from negative infinity through infinity. And if you look at this infographic on the top right, you see that real numbers can be broken up into a bunch of different subcategories. We have natural numbers, uh, which are our counting numbers, one, two, three, four, and so on. Whole numbers, which are the counting numbers, including zero. Integers, they take the whole numbers and then also add in the negatives. Rational numbers, these are any ratio of integers or a fraction where the denominator isn't zero. And then irrational numbers, which are your real numbers that can't be expressed as a ratio. So the square root of, of two or pi would be irrational. Then we talk about a set. So as you see these numbers above, they're in set notation. And this is a collection of items, which we call each of those items in there, elements. And they're housed inside braces, which is what these brackets are. These curly brackets, they're called braces. There's two different types of notation that we're going to use when we talk about numbers. We have roster notation, which is what you see above, and that uses the braces to list all of the elements of a set. And then there's what's called set builder notation, which uses braces again, but it identifies your variable. So here it says X. Then it has this vertical bar, which represents such that. And then after the vertical bar, it tells you the restrictions. So this would be read X, such that x is an even number between 0 and 10. Now let's really dive into those real numbers and what we can do with them. First, we're going to talk about opposites. So every real number has an opposite denoted as negative x for x. The opposites x and negative x are the same distance from 0 on a number line. In this example, the opposite of a is denoted as negative a. So we're given the opposites here, and we need to simplify them. So we need to get rid of the parentheses. In example one, we're told the opposite of 7 thirds. Well, 7 thirds is positive, so the opposite is negative 7 thirds. In example two, we have the opposite of negative 7, and the opposite of a negative is a positive. So the simplification here is 7. Now notice that opposites, we said the same distance from 0 on a number line. This helps us explain what absolute value means. The absolute value, which is denoted with these two vertical bars, the absolute value of a real number is the distance between that value, x, and 0 on a number line. Another way to think about absolute value is that it's a happy machine. Anything that is inside of that absolute value, inside those vertical bars, comes out positive. It's always positive. In example 1, we're taking the absolute value of negative 2 negative 2 is inside of the absolute value. So it comes out positive, or as 2. If we think about distance, negative 2 on a number line is 2 units from 0, right? Here's 0, and here's negative 2. We have 1, 2 units. So absolute value is telling us the distance from 0. In problem two, we have the opposite of the absolute value of negative one half. Notice inside the absolute value is a negative one half. So that inside comes out as a positive one half. But then we're told to take the opposite. So this simplifies to negative one half. Now let's use these rules to help us with the addition of real numbers. Remember when you're adding real numbers, if they have the same sign, 
you're gonna add their absolute values and use that same sign on the sum. If they have different signs, you'll subtract the smaller absolute value from the larger absolute value and then apply the sign of the number with the larger absolute value. Let's start simple. Notice that all three of these problems use the same fractions, one half and two thirds. We need an LCD because adding or subtracting fractions, you have to have a common denominator. And the LCD of two and three would be six. So the first fraction is rewritten as three six plus the second fraction of four six. Because both of these terms have the same sign, we're going to add them and keep that same sign positive. Remember we add the numerators, so this is a positive 7 6. Again, in problem 2, we need to go to the common denominator. So negative 3 6 plus a 4 6. We're going to take 4 6 and subtract the 3 6 because the 4 6 in absolute values is larger than the absolute value of negative 3 6. And this will give us 1 6. And because the 4 6 was positive and it's the larger, it stays positive. Now, example 3, we have a negative 3 6 and we're adding a negative 4 6. We're going to add the absolute values of these. So if we add 3 6 plus 4 6, that's what we did in number 1, we get 7 6. But because both of these terms had a negative sign, we're going to apply that common negative sign, and we have a negative 7 6. Now, look at what we did in example three and this definition of the subtraction of real numbers. If a and b are real numbers, then a minus b is the same as a plus negative b, or a plus the opposite of b. That's exactly what we were doing above. Now, in an Example one and two here, notice we have those same fractions again. So we know the LCD is six, so we're just gonna rewrite the problems. We have three six minus a negative four six. If we apply this subtraction rule, we can change this subtraction to addition of the opposite of what's in our parentheses. And the opposite of negative 4, 6 is a positive 4, 6. So you see how these two negative signs, the subtraction and the opposite, convert to addition. And this simplifies to 7, 6. Now again, rewrite those fractions. We have negative 3, 6, and we're subtracting 4, 6. Notice that this is exactly the same as number 3 above. We had negative 3, 6 minus 4, 6, right? Because it was negative 3, 6, we can change it to addition of the opposite. And that looks just like number 3 that we just did, right? And this is negative 7, 6. Now, what if we multiply and divide real numbers? When you multiply and you have the same sign, it stays positive. So a negative times a negative is a positive. A positive times a positive is a positive. When you have different signs, that's when you end up with a negative product or quotient. And you have to remember multiplication of zero, anything times zero equals zero. And probably the trickier ones are division with zero. Zero divided by B equals zero. So if you have zero cookies and you share it with seven friends, everybody still gets zero cookies. But 
seven cookies divided by zero friends is undefined. And if you want to hear a funny response to this, ask your smartphone or Amazon device what a number divided by zero is. So in examples one and two, we're going to actually do the division here. We have negative 81 over three. Well, this is the same as negative one times 81 over three. And 81 is nine times nine. And we can simplify a three in the denominator and a three in the numerator, and we're left with a three in the numerator. So we get negative one times nine times three, or negative one times 27. This simplifies to negative 27. In example two, we have negative one fifth and we're dividing by a whole number. Remember the whole number can be written as a fraction and dividing a fraction by a fraction, you keep that first fraction and you multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. Now notice we have a negative times a negative. So we know it's gonna be positive, so we can change this to one-fifth times one-fifth. And that would equal one over 25. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this helpful. And if you did, I hope you'll check out some of my other math videos for more help.